of this. And there went out the king of Sodom, verse 8, <coughs> of Sodom, and king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, and the king of, king of Zebuim, and the king of Bela, the same is over, and they joined battle with them in the vale of Zidim. Verse 9, with Kedar Laomer, Laomer, king of Elam, and with Tidal, king of nations, and Amrapel, king of Shinar, and Ayo, king of Eleazar, four kings with five. This is the one that I'm telling you before, that the four kings versus five kings. <coughs> and the veil of Sidim was full of slime pits, and the king of Zodom and Gomorrah fled fell there, and they, they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all the victuals, and went their way. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, and dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. Verse 13, And there came one that had escaped, and told Abraham the Hebrew, For he that dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite brother of Eskel, and the brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abraham. Verse 14. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he and his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he delivered himself against them, and he, his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued, pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left left hand of Damascus, verse 16. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his good and, and the woman also and the people. Here we can see five kings defeated the four kings. Some things that are, something that we can see that uh, in that time, uh, I don't know how, how, what I'm thinking while I'm studying this, while I'm reading this, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking how many soldiers for each king? I don't know, I do not know. I'm really imagining how, how big is their army for every one king. But here we can see that five kings defeated, uh, uh, we see that the five kings were defeated by the four kings. And here also we see, but the four kings defeated by, uh, here, sorry, here the four kings who defeated the five kings were defeated by Abraham with only with three uh, with men of 318 this is very clear right that the, the four kings were defeated by Abraham that was in verse uh, there is many is only 318 in verse 18 if you are going to study it if you are going to look at it as, as, as I asked you a while ago, that how many soldiers for each king when they make battles with the five kings? And now, how many kings? Maybe the four kings have a lot of soldiers than the five kings. That's why they were defeated. But here we can see the four kings were defeated by Abraham. Abraham who was only 318 and that is very clear. He has men born of his own house, 318 men, and they defeated the four kings. If you're going to study this, how many soldiers are there with the four kings or with those four kingdoms? And with a very clear number that Abraham has, he has only 318 men and he defeated them. Here, where's that? In uh, Genesis 19, verse 20 says, says here, And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. This is Melchizedek. In verse 20, Blessed be the most high God, which had delivered thine enemies into thine hand, and gave him the tithes of all. God delivered them to his hand. You know the reason why Abraham was able to defeat those four kings? Because it is in, in verse 20, which had delivered thine enemies into thine hand. Who delivered them into his hand? God. It is God. But that is not something, that is not simple. 
Imagine 318 men against four kingdoms and they were all defeated. And why? It is because God blessed Abraham. God protect, protected Abraham. God delivered them into his hand. Something that we need to see, that we need to be aware. If we think that because people, a lot of people here, that are, especially those who are not Christian, you see they are, it seems that they are reigning in victory because of their wealth. No. It's not that. You see what God will do and did in our life. That is the thing that we need to see. If you're going to look at it, Abraham, with only 318 men, defeated the four kingdoms. It is because God is the one who delivered them. It is God who helped Abraham. I hope and I pray that we're going to be aware that we see how God helped us. And everything that we do in our life, he will be glorified. In 1 Corinthians 15, 57, But thanks be to God, which given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is very clear. The reason why we can only have victory in this world, it is because through our Lord Jesus Christ. Only because of him. No, no more, no less. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and make it manifest the Savior of, our, of his knowledge by us in every place. Here the, Paul is saying, because Paul in every time that they go to the place, they are in danger. But what Paul says, but now thanks be unto God, which, causeth, which always causeth us to triumph. You see, even in the life of Apostle Paul, they, he always triumphed because of, the, because of the help, because of the protection of God. Same thing with us, even now. Though sometimes we are not aware, though sometimes we are not, we are not appreciative of, or sometimes we are not even think, thanking God or because we are so familiar with this. But no, if we are going to study God and if we are going to study the, the good things that God is doing in our life, we will be amazed. Romans 8.31 says, What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Something uh, we always say, if you are being favored by, the, by Pres President Duterte, you will be happy, you will be, uh, what do you call it? Maybe you will brag, maybe you will boast, oh, King Duterte, ah, King Duterte. <laughs> President Duterte helped me, he, he favored me, right? I mean, in your mind, uh, well, let us admit it. Like, for example, the king of, uh, the, king, the president of the United States, of the United States, or even the, the prime minister, if the prime minister of uh, Cambodia help you, you will be happy, right? But here, we can see, it says in, in Romans 8.31, what shall we then say to these things? If God is before us, if God is with us, who can be against us? There's nothing in this world can be defeat can defeat us, but we can we need only to to trust in Him. So here we see that the background we see the the word mentioned here that uh, after these things. Here now let me give you my point number two. What's that? My point number two here is the word of the Lord came to Abraham. The word of the Lord, the Lord came to Abraham. It is clear that the word of the Lord came to Abraham, okay? So that uh, when the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, in verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came, to, came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. So here we can see that the Lord uh, appeared or uh, talked to Abraham. But here, let me just give you things here that uh, if you know the, the law per first mention, here there are at least four things that were first mentioned in verse 1 of chapter 15 of Genesis. The first mention of the word of the Lord, it was mentioned here in verse 1. The word of the Lord first mentioned. And the first mention of vision, it was mentioned in chapter 15 verse 1. And also the third uh, first mention here, shield and reward, it was first mentioned here in Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. And one more thing, the first I am of the scripture. It was, it was mentioned in chapter 15, verse 1 of Genesis. 
they were first mentioned here. Here. Now, let me just ask you, why they were mentioned? Of course, these, are thing, these things are being mentioned for the glory of God. But if you're going to study it, why are they, men they mentioned in verse 1 of chapter 15? It was mentioned because of his faithfulness. Abraham, his faithfulness to God. You study this, you look at it, you will see the reason why these things were mentioned because of Abraham's faithfulness to God. But we know Abraham messed up also, right? But here, we see these things were mentioned because of his faithfulness to God. I, I remember what uh, Brother Jeremiah said that uh, God is not looking on the weakness of our faith, but is looking on what faith we have for us to be strengthened by God, for us to hold on to God. In Genesis, but we know also that Abraham, he messed up. He even lied. We know that. And he, it, he even, it was even, uh, what do you call this, uh, repeated by Isaac. But he, we know he messed up. But in Genesis chapter 14, verse 22 and 23, here, it says here, And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, this is what the Lord, how, why the Lord blessed him. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abraham preach. So he, because of his faithfulness to God, he was blessed by God. And we see that it is very clear. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10, it says here, For God is not unrighteous to forget. See? What Abraham did wasn't forgotten by God. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. It says here very clear, Whatever things that we do for the Lord, it will not be forgotten. For God is not unrighteous to forget the work and labor of love. Anything that we do for the Lord will be recorded. Everything that we do for the Lord, it will be rewarded. So let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due time we will, we will reap if we faint not. All the things that we do for the Lord will, will be rewarded. So here, I just let me just encourage you, let me say that let us continue to do the things, all the things that we do, only for the Lord. God will not forget all the things that we are doing for Him. And this, this came to my last point, point number three. It says, the message to Abraham. The message to Abraham. There are at least three things that we can see here that the message came from the Lord or the message to Abraham. Number one, it says, fear not. The Lord says, fear not. Something is, uh, we always hear and something that we, we need to uh, hold on to. But the one who said that, that fear not, is the Lord. He said that to Abraham. Why? Maybe this implies that saying that he was afraid. The reason why the Lord said maybe he's afraid, it implies that he was afraid. Thinking that the kings he defeated may regroup and take vengeance against him. Maybe that's that the reason why he's afraid. But the Lord says in, in Psalms 23 verse 27, 3 says, Though as an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be content, confident. Though things this happen in our life, we will still be confident because the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. Isaiah 41 verse 10 Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the righteous right hand of my righteousness. Uphold with the, the right hand of my righteousness. Here it says it to Abraham, it was mentioned to Isaiah, but it is also the promise to us. That God says, well, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Something that we need to always be sensitive. 
to think about that God is always here in our life. He promised that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Sometimes, to know that it is sometimes even hard to, uh, sometimes we are struggling to trust God when there is a problem. But keep on holding on to the Lord because He will be the one to help us. In Psalms 180, 118 verse 6 says, the Lord, is my, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what, what can man do unto me. It is very clear here, it says, the Lord is on my side. You know that when the Lord, when we are doing the things of the Lord, He is always on our side. The Lord is always on our side. But when we, when we depart on the, His will, on the truth of His word, or against His will, he will not be on our side. I'm not saying that God is not there, no. I'm saying God will not honor the things that we do if they are not being done for Him. Amen. The Lord is always on our side. John 14, verse 1 and 27. 14, 1 and 27. Verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. That is what the Lord is saying. Let not your heart be troubled. In verse 21, 27. Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, giveth I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither, neither let it be afraid. That is what the Lord says. Don't, don't let your heart be troubled, and don't let it be afraid. Don't let even be afraid of the things that, although sometimes it is really especially the things that are, are happening, happening in this world, especially now the, the pandemic, the B117, uh, coronavirus, they said it is more uh, contagious, it is more uh, dangerous, or oh, I'm not saying dangerous, but it is more something that can spread easily. Or maybe there are a lot of things that are happening, especially in the Philippines, cal calamities uh, the, that are happening. Uh, actually, we don't even know that a lot of things are uh, happening in other countries because of flood, earthquakes we see that but something we should not be we should not be afraid of those things but because God is with us so here we see the protection of God and then that that led me to my point number two in man number three God says I am your shield I am your shield God says to Abraham I am your shield if, if, though all is not mentioned in, 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 the, in the Bible or in this chapter 14 and 15 God is saying I am your shield if they will come back to you and revenge I will still be your shield I will still be the one to help you to, be, to, to get victory against your enemy he says here I am your shield is there anything better than that when God says I am your shield there's nothing better than that when God said I am your shield God personally saying, I am, I am, I am your shield. I am your protection. That is what the Lord is saying here. In Psalms 3 verse 3, it says here, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of mine head. Psalms 84 verse 11, For the Lord God is a sun, sun means direction and shield, the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will, be, will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. So if we walk according to the will of God, there is nothing that, anything that we can do. And God will always help us. And God will always be the one to guide us in our life. Psalms 91 verse 4, He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under, and under His wings, shalt thou trust his trust shall be thy shield and buckler so let us continue to trust God and he will be the one to be our shield in everything that we do in our life if we let our God move in our life we give him our life anyway this life belongs to him we are just a, a uh, what do you call this it was entrusted unto us but even though God still want us to continue to give this life to Him for Him to be trusted in everything that we do. So here we see that God is always protecting us. I don't know how you I do not know how God how you see God protecting your life. 
It is your personal life. It is my personal life. But I do not, for me, if you're going to ask me, I have seen a lot of times how God protected me. I do not know how many times God protected you. But I know God, you have seen the protection of God in your life. I know for sure, 100%. I know that how God protected you, protected you from something. I may not know it, but you know it and God know it. Even me. There are a lot of things that God protected me in my life that I can say that even my life now, I think my life now, if you're going to remove Christ, there's nothing in me anymore. Because God protected me. And this led me to, to point number three. It says here, I am thy exceeding great reward. A lot, uh, mostly, oh, for us, when we work, we get our salary. For us, when we do something, uh, that, uh, for example, your job or anything that you do, you will be rewarded. But here, if you're going to see it, because of what Abraham did, and he, because he has been faithful to God, God says, I will be your reward. You you this uh, you uh, neglect that those material things that uh, that king that wicked king of Sodom is giving you you, you uh, what do you call that you did not accept them now I will be your reward because you've been faithful to me something that we we need to be uh, be very 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 joyful and be very very happy why because God is our reward even here on earth we see the reward of God how he he kept his promises that he will never leave us how much more when we are in heaven when we see him face to face when we see those reward that he will give it to us something there is nothing nothing in this world can be can uh, uh, can compare to those things that God had given us here we see that Abraham refused to accept the reward of the wicked king of Sodom in verse 22 and 23, And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord. I have sworn unto God, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread of even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine. I will not anything that belongs to you, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abraham, Abraham rich. Because Abraham knew already, and the Lord said, He will be his reward. Do you know that God even said, God is your reward in everything that we do? You need to be, you need to cheer up. Ang Panginoon po, the Lord is our reward. And he, he don't want, we see that Abraham don't want to destroy the testimony of God's blessing in his life. You don't want to be compromised. Ayaw niyang mahaluan yung blessing ng Diyos sa kanya. Here Abraham saw the rapid change of fortune or wealth of the world. Maybe that what Abraham saw. That there is a rapid changes of the fortune or the wealth of this world. Let me give you at least five things in this that uh, we, can, uh, we can see how Abraham uh, stand for God or how he trusted God in his life. Here, Abraham saw the wealth of Sodom and Lot were gone. Easily. He saw that. Because when the five, when the kings fought, they took everything. The possession of the, of the five kings and also Lot were taken. His wives, his children, and everything that they have, they were gone easily. Abraham saw that. Number two, the fortune of many cities was taken away. The cities or the kingdoms were taken because of the, the four kings. And here also, we see these kings are wealthy. We know that. These kings were wealthy and suddenly they were gone because they were defeated by the four kings. And everything that they had, what happened? Were taken. And one more, it says here, number four, little security in world in worldly riches here we can see that they are king already they have a lot of soldiers but here abraham saw the security of this world is very little you must have at least siguro you must at least have a lot maybe a lot of soldiers for you for your world to be protected 
And one more, it says here, wealth are not secured, secured in this world. And we know that. Wealth are not secured in this world. In Matthew chapter 19, verse, Matthew 6, verse 19 and 20 says, Lay not up for yourself treasure upon earth, where moth and rust that corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. So the, the wealth here is not protected. But lay up yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust that corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. Abraham knew that the, the wealth or the things in this world will be gone away. But the things that we have, we do for the Lord, the things that we are, uh, uh, what do you call this? The things that we do for Christ will not be lost because they're not, there will be no robber in heaven. There will be no pickpocketers. There will be no moth or rust. They will stay forever. But let me finish in this. Here we see how God blessed Abraham. We saw because Abraham stand for the Lord. And Abraham was blessed by God saying, Fear not, for I am your shield and I am your great reward. Imagine when the word was said, it is not only reward. The Lord says, I am your great, I am your great, great reward. Something that we need to to be amazed, something we need to be blessed. But you know what? Let me say this. Today, the message is still the same. The message is still the same. The Lord is saying to you and me, fear not. I am your shield. I am your great reward. Still, message is still the same. Still the same. Even now. The Lord is saying, not to fear. I am your protection. I am your reward. That is what the Lord is saying. Let me just close in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If we seek God, he will be the one to reward us. Though we are Christian, though we are saved already, we still need to seek God in our life. And our seeking will be rewarded by our God. So that message is given to us even now. Though it happened in the, in the time of Abraham, the message is still the same. God will never leave us nor forsake us. Let us all stand up and let us pray.